Hello, and welcome to part three of the Imminent Collections Bionicle episode. So, I've been looking through my Bionicle collection. Uh, we've been going through the Matoran, the Toa Nuva, the Borok, the Rakshi, and the man, the myth, the legend himself, Pterodax, or Makuta. Well, this episode is kind of the wrap-up. Um, I have less... Uh, less of a like cohesive collection here. It's just bits and pieces of different lines I bought over the years that I thought it ends with because these are later on, um, you know, additions to the line. So without further ado, let's jump into it and let's begin with the Vaki. So these were um, other kind of villain things, kind of in the kind of in the theme of Rakshi. So. Let's begin with the first one, Nurak. So he is the protector of Tar Metru. Um, so I'm pretty sure these ones featured in the second Bionicle movie, uh, Legends of Metru Nui. So it's kind of new cities and stuff, and each new city had a protector, uh, which was the Ivaki. But Pterodax, or Makuta, kind of corrupted them, so they went from protectors for good to kind of evil villainous things. So, as you can see, they've kind of got the Rakshi thing going on, but they are quite different as well. They do look a bit more Toa-esque, if that makes sense, whereas the Rakshi will curved back and everything. Uh, you know, th these guys are more kind of up, uh, well, they're, they're upwards at least, you know, regularly. So, as you can tell, um, their heads are quite different as well. They've got a massive glowy brain bit, basically, as I've been referring to it. Uh, you know, their legs uh, have different pieces and stuff as well. These are very standard, especially these days. Any Technic kit in LEGO. Um, but, you know, it's got all the uh, bionicle goodness. So it's got some of these arms, which are kind of newer versions of the old Toa arms. And, of course, each of them comes with kind of claws. So these are kind of pincers, I guess. And of course, these have a play feature too, uh, and that is their kind of arms swing back and forth. Again, making pausing a little bit difficult. It's not the end of the world. And of course, there's the elephant in the room, this massive disc. So, as with the Matorans uh, that had the disc launchers from part one, these can also be fired. So, I'm going to try and... Uh... Hey, there you go. So... You slot them into their jaws. Obviously, each of them have like their own designs or whatever. Um, so yeah, so this is the Tar Metro one. This is the sort of protector of the fire land. Uh, obviously, this turned evil. I haven't watched the second one in quite a few years. I might, you know, I might watch them after making this video. I'm back in a bionicle mood now. But yeah, I quite like the Vaki. They're not sort of the craziest villains, but I still like them. Now also, there is the alternative mode. So if you turn its head this, hang on, there you go. So if you turn it that way, and I think you put this that way, so this is kind of an official mode. Hang on, Bobby. So this is kind of a transformation, but basically you kind of turn it that way, and I think it's meant to go that way, right? And you kind of turn them into like weird spider creature kind of things. So in the movie, I remember they'd sort of, when they wanted to get away quickly, they'd kind of change into this mode and like scuttle away or whatever. So I'll leave that like that in the background. I know there were like larger kits, um, you know, back in the day, sort of like the early few years. If you'd get spider-like creatures, so I mean, it's a cool callback to that, really. Um, so, it's time for my second and only other Vaki, which is Bordak. So, this is the protector of Gar Metro, which, obviously, if you've been paying attention to the part one and two, is the, like, water place. Um, Tar, Gar, Lay is air, Ko is uh, ice. So this one, uh, of the two, I think I prefer this one, both colour scheme wise and like just it slightly looks a bit cooler. So it's got a yellow kind of highlight as opposed to green. Um, it's, you know, legs and stuff again. Now, 
Now I will give them credit, these are very pausable. You can pull off some really cool pauses with this because uh, the legs, much like the Rakshi, are like really complex. You can pull off a massive range of motions. So, you know, you can make them look very different. And of course, we have the uh, the Kohi, no, I can't remember what these discs are called now. Kanohi, I think. Um, so there we are, we've got that. It's basically a blue version of the red one there. And this blades, I prefer a lot more as well. It just, they look more like blades rather than pincery things. Um, but yeah, this is a, obviously, protector as well. It's turned evil. It can also transform, but I'm going to leave this one untransformed like that. Um, yeah, the Vaki were cool. I mean, honestly, I don't think I'll buy any more. You know, I might buy a few of the ones I'm missing from the other sets, but, like, I'm happy with these Vaki, but I don't really need the other four, to be honest. They're, they're cool designs, but they're, they're not my favourite. Anyway, on to some other stuff. So, on the topic of Metro Nui, it is time for the Toa Metro. So, these guys um, are basically updated versions of the Toa. Uh, I can't remember, I don't think they showed up. They might show up in the third movie, but I can't quite remember. Uh, but first up, so I've only got three of these, uh, and unfortunately I do not have a leader character in this one, but I do have Matau, Toa Metro of Ice. Uh, I'm going to drop the camera a little bit, actually. So, as we can see, this is a successor to Kopaka. He's, he obviously looks quite a bit like Kopaka as well. He's got the big eye, although, curiously, it switched sides. So, Kopaka had a right eye with, like, a lens. This guy has a left eye. So, these also, much like the Toa, have skulls underneath them. I, I don't know how I feel about these skulls. I still don't, because... The mouths are what make them a bit weird. The rest of them are kind of interesting. I like the um, elongated colour panel thing. But, I don't know, it's just something about that face looks a little bit off to me. Uh, but yeah, this is his hood and stuff, so, or mask rather. So the cool thing with the Toa Metro is they're slightly more streamlined designs, I guess you'd say. Um, they're a little bit more simplistic in some sense, but more complex in others as we'll take a look. So these are their like shoulder parts and stuff. They of course have a play feature. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of them do this, which is just the arm thing. Uh, looking down, so the the one thing that's like striking about the Toa Metro is they're all one colour. Um, so whereas the old Toa Nuva had, you know, like Kopaka was grey and white or whatever, and technically he's grey here, but it's just the underpieces. You know, they'd, while they'd have different shades, or like Tahu, for example, would have red and orange. Um, and Toa Metro were just one colour. So they've got new foot pieces. I do like the feet in these and like the legs and stuff. So the legs, much like um, a lot of the villains, have very good range of stuff. So, again, you could you know, place his foot on something and make him look like he's climbing. And talking about climbing, he's got some axes. Um, so I don't know how I feel about this, really. He's just got, like, ice pick axes. They're kind of cool, but I don't know. I, I like Kapaka having sort of, you know, robot-y kind of uh, either a gun or a spear or something. Uh, the other thing with the Toa Metro... Uh, is that they have alternate modes. So, um, the other ones have things you can mount on the back. Unfortunately, I've tried with Kopaka. Uh, sorry, that's, this isn't Kopaka. Um, I've tried, but unfortunately, I can't really seem to get a good way of doing it. But you might be able to guess where this is going. He lives in a snowy, mountainous area. So, when he walks in snow, he's going to need snowshoes. So basically, these are actually kind of cool. They're very straightforward. There's two little black nubs there. Two little uh, holes at the bottom of his feet. You attach it along with these ones. Uh, and there you go. He's got some snowshoes to sort of climb up a treacherous snowy mountain in. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Much like a lot of the Toa Nuva ones, some of them are cool, some of them are derpy. 
this is it's all right i mean it's not bad it makes sense it's just it's not super cool but i don't know i i like his mask i i don't know if this split the fandom or whatever i've never really been in touch with the bionicle fandom i i do follow the subreddit but you know but he's cool i like him yeah. although to be honest probably my least favorite tower uh or tower design then sorry uh I don't know, it's just, I, I like that they went a different art direction, but like this, eh, it doesn't really do it for me, I don't know. It, there's too many empty holes, and I know they want to make them seem like mechanical beings, and they are, but I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, up next, we have the Tower of Air, Nuju. Uh, so, I've got to say, Nuju is, I think, my favourite of the three Tower Metro I own. So, he is a lot darker than Liwa. Um, he is green, but he's like deep forest green. That's the one thing I'm not super thrilled about. I kind of wish he was a bit lighter, but this was around 2006, 2007 or something. Maybe it was 2004, I can't remember. But they were going for like a slightly edgier kind of appeal. Understandable, you know. Uh, so yeah, so this is Nuju. This is his mask. And much like um, not Kopakas, I can't remember his name even. Um, it's kind of elongated at the back here, so we'll take off his mask briefly. There's his face with the red eyes. And I mean, again, it, it's a cool mask. It's more minimalist. Uh, it's got the kind of swoop thing, you know, going on. Again, like, I'm still not fully sure how I feel about the Toa Metro. I mean, I'm keeping them. Because, you know, they're, they're definitely, they were a part of my adolescent, well, childhood slash adolescence, I don't know. Um, but, of course, he is all green and stuff. As you can see, they're more uniform as well. They, they all look the same, roughly. Apart from, of course, the colours and their weapons. Now, he, Nuju, has swords. Now, I'm not going to take them off and put them in his hands, because you can probably imagine how, you know, these swords look. They're really cool. They do um, remind me a lot of Liwa's swords, which are kind of cool. You know, they've stuck to that design. Um, and part of the reason I love him the most is because they've got they've all got the features of getting around and stuff, of course. Well, Nuju can do what I always wished Liwa could, which is spread his wings. So, you know, you can put them like that, obviously, put his arms... Ah, I just realised. Um, hang on, wait, can you... Ah, okay, yeah, so you can put his arms that way, I guess. So he's got the play feature as well, which is very annoying. I'm sure you can mod it so that it doesn't, you know, move these, but let's say his hands are forward and you can kind of make him fly, you know, as like Liwa would or something, which I thought was really cool. Um, ironically, actually, I think when I bought this, I was kind of out of the phase of playing with my Bionicle. So, this was kind of like, oh man, I wish this had happened years before. I mean, technically, you're never too old to play with, uh, never too old to play with toys. If you still enjoy that, hey, more power to you. Um, but yeah, I, I, I like Nuju. I think he's, as I say, my favourite of the Toa Nuva. It's uh, Toa Metro, sorry, not Nuva. Um, but again, it's sort of there's just something about the body proportions that aren't super, you know, my cup of tea. Anyway, on to the last one now, which is, and this is very confusingly named, Onewa. Not to be confused with Onua. This is Onewa. Uh, I should have the name on the screen here, so you'll be able to see the difference, but... This is the Toa of Stone, or Pohatu's kind of spiritual successor um, and he's kind of cool as well to be honest so part of the reason I got him I'm pretty sure actually when I bought these the whole line was there but I remember and I didn't buy the all three at once I think I came you know came back but I think the only reason I bought him was because I never got Pohatu so I thought eh, he's kind of a stand-in you know um, really thinking of it I should have got the red one just because he'd have been you know the leader again but I will say his mask is cool. So let's take Onewa's mask off. So it's got like the big open kind of 
diver's mask kind of thing going on. So he's blue behind. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, the he's kind of open up there. His body is basically the same as the others. Um, the cool thing about Oniwa is that he has these kind of ropes. So again, these look a lot like Oniwa's, uh, Pohatu's um, Toanuva kind of weapons. But obviously they're on like chains. So, uh, um, so the cool thing here is you can like hang them on the back here and have him just, you know, like a regular robot dude. But then he can wield them and the whole point of his traversal is that he like swings on them from like rock to rock and stuff like that. Again, I'm not going to pull them out because there's no point you guys can see what they are. I really like the design though. And yeah, that's the uh, Tower Metro. Not my favourite. I don't hate them, but like they're, they're like a solid like 7 out of 10, you know, like I like them enough, but they wouldn't be pride of place in any like display I had going on or anything. But right, it is on to the last batch. All right, so um, if anyone remembers, in 2015, Lego reintroduced Bionicle. Uh, and honestly, it was a kind of incredible time because uh, it was it was just, just the right moment where I was like nostalgic enough that I was like, you know what? This is it. This is going to be the series. I'm going to like buy some Bionicle again. I saw the pictures. They looked incredible. Uh, you know, like way, way like higher quality than, uh, than, you know, old ones. Obviously, because like 20 years had passed or 15 years or whatever. So it's understandable. Um, however, I actually only ended up buying two of them. So I will show you what two I bought. So these are the Toa. Uh, from the 2015 line. I've looked around. I don't know if there's an agreed upon name for these. I'm going to refer to them as like Remake Tower, I guess, because these are literally the Toa Nuva, uh, the six, you know, from the start, the first Toas I showed off, but remade, basically. So the first one is Onua. I love this guy. He is... Ah, he's exactly what, like, Oniwa should have been from the start, really. Um, I've got a lot of love for these, for these, like, remake towers. Now, admittedly, I am kind of tempted now to buy the other four as well, to be honest. But we'll take a look at Oniwa. So he is chunky. He is a wide boy. He's as wide as he is tall, almost. Uh, so we'll take a look. So that is his mask. So... The masks are kind of different. Uh, the faces underneath. The faces remind me of the Michael Bay Transformers movies. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. They, they've got the slightly uncanny kind of human-y look. So that is his mask here. Uh, so we'll clip that back on. They clip on really easy as well, which is nice. So he's got very wide shoulders. He's got a kind of gold, purple and black colour scheme going on. Now, I think there are some gold parts here, so it's been a while since I've assembled these. There's a few gold parts because you can make them kind of upgraded tower. So as you can see here, he's got some gold bits here and gold bits there. I can't remember, I think these might just be removable and these are like additional accessories I put on basically. Um, so, you know, I'll get at that in a second as well. So I love the purple on him, it really pops. The purple and gold and black just... It works so well together. And then he's got his weapons, which are like digging claw kind of things. Now, I love these things. These are amazing. He can, you know, sort of... He's quite an imposing figure, I think, with these kind of claws. And as well, those of you with eagle eyes will notice, there is a hammer on the back, which I'm going to take off. Sorry about that. That uh, took a lot longer than expected. So, you take off his uh, two hand kind of things there and lock them into place. You put them into the uh, back of the hammer here and... So another cool thing as well, he's got hands. They've actually got like hands with fists and stuff. That's really cool. And it can turn into a kind of hammer weapon as well, which is really cool. So, you know, it depends what kind of thing you want. Personally, I prefer his, like, claws, because 
just looks better but uh, yeah that is on Niwa and honestly he is oh, he's just beautiful like I I really like what they've done with him because he was the you know short squat dude that was like you know really hench and stuff and they've just made him perfectly like th this is a really good reinterpretation of it I love it uh, so of course next up we have I mean look I've already mentioned this several times before. I love Kopaka. Uh, I just, oh god, he's actually too tall, hang on. All right, that's the best I can do. So uh, Kopaka is, once I, you know, found out they were remaking Bionicle, I knew I had to get him. So he also came in, uh, now correct me if I'm wrong, I think you could buy two different packs. You could either get the regular Toa or a Toa with a special kind of thing. Uh, so this is Melum, who has got kind of an interesting thing. It's kind of like a, a bird. It's an ice guardian bird, I think, from what I read. Um, so it, it's pretty cool. It's got, you know, like a little helmet with horns there. It's got cool ice-like uh, claws and stuff. It's got like these cool gold things on its hands and it's got some feet. Now this kind of attaches itself to Kopaka I think which I'll give a go to in a second but we'll take a look at base form Kopaka first. Uh, so he he's amazing so I'm gonna have to like tilt him uh, slightly. So we'll take a look at the mask first. Man I love this mask so it's obviously a callback to original Kopaka He's got the thing! You know, I mentioned at the start, I was kind of wished they had some kind of blue highlight or something on his face. They did it! They put a blue stud there! Ah, oh, and it's just, it's so cool. It's silver and white. Like, it's a really nice looking mask, I think. It's, um, obviously it's quite a bit different from original Kapaka. You know, I'm sure some people dislike it. But, uh, oh, it's so cool. So obviously he's a lot taller than Oniwa. He's a lot slimmer and stuff. He's got a cool chest kind of bit here uh, and there. And then, uh, so down here, the gold bits again. The gold are kind of like, uh, you know, optional, I think. So he's got a play gimmick. So does Onua. He does the same. So you turn it and they move. Uh, so Kopaka, he's got, you know, cool legs and stuff. Now he has a gun. This also doubles, I believe, as a shield, so it's technically a shield gun, uh, which is very nice. But yet again, he's just living up to that beautiful kind of like combo that I always loved of, uh, you know, he's sort of, he's got a gun, but he's also got a sword and stuff. And uh, it's, it's just really cool. So I think you can attach it on the back here. Um, and it's got some cool thing. Now, this does fire, I believe, with that. But I'm not going to do it because, honestly, these are going to be lost forever. And I'd like all of his uh, like all of his studs there. And the coolest part, he's also got studs there. So this is like a second clip, basically. If he runs out of his ice clip, he can just put more on. Ah, it's so cool. And then, of course, he's got his cool double ice sword thing which is very like Nordic looking it's like it's got the horns uh, that also Melum has it's like a little tail which is nice and oh, man just like the effect on this making it like blue tipped and everything just like man he's so cool K Kapaka really does look like I don't know it looks like he's such like a lone wolf character I guess which he is you know it makes sense and yeah, I just, I know I've gushed about his character design so much, but it's its perfect. It's exactly what I would have expected a remake Kopaka to look like, really. Well, not exactly, obviously, I wouldn't have predicted everything here, but it's, it's cool. He's got a gun, he's got a really cool sword, he's just cool. Right, I'm going to go tinker with Melum now to try and make him, like, super Kopaka. All right, so that's a rough version of it. Uh, I think it, I, I could do a little bit better but I'm not going to uh, so another thing I forgot to mention as well so I looked this up online so um, 
every kit as well comes of course with a gold mask so as you can see here this is Kopaka's gold version of his regular mask uh, so this is when he like unites uh, with Merum so I really like the gold thing on this because it turns like the silver into transparent blue uh, it's it's just really cool. I mean, admittedly, this, uh, you know, makes it look a bit better. I might take the gold things off him. I can't, I can't really decide yet. But um, obviously, Onua also comes with a gold mask. Sadly, Onua's one, uh, because it's just plain black, is just plain gold. It's got none of the cool, like, translucent blue thing. But it's just further proof through, I think, the Kopaka... Uh, you know, from the remake is just like brilliant, basically. Um, well, yeah, that about wraps it up, honestly. Part three has been a bit shorter, but you know, that's just because, as I say, this is more of a wrap up. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Um, it's been a lot of fun. I'm probably gonna end up buying a few Bionicle uh, things just to like complete the few sets, as I say. Keep an eye on Instagram, I'll probably post there if I do happen to get stuff. Or maybe I'll do a follow-up video if I get a particular lot of them or something, I don't know. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. This has taken a lot of a lot of time, I've done a lot of research. This is probably the most researched video I've ever done. Um, but as I've said in the other parts as well, let me know what your favourite Bionicle things are. Are there sets I'm completely missing out on? Are there other cool Kopakas that I've just never seen? Let me know, um, and let me know what your favourite ones are as well. I mean, I know Bionicle was really big for a while, and then it just completely fizzled out. And now, I mean, sadly, it's kind of a little bit of a meme. Um, I've heard a few people sort of discussing, like, the Bionicle law, as if, you know, it's like, oh, it's a silly thing that some silly people were into. It's like, no, man, I really liked that growing up. Bionicle is, like, is what made me who I am today, partly. Um, and you know, I'm hoping other people who watch this, maybe you've watched it for nostalgia purposes or something, or you just never knew about Bionicle. Um, you know, I hope this at least has some somehow either, you know, re-emerged some memories you'd forgotten about, or introduced you to something really cool. Um, I did mention as well, sadly, it was like, oh man, they're remaking it in 2015. I think by 2017 they'd completely stopped any Bionicle sets. And that's the last we ever heard of them. Um, Maybe one day we'll have more Bionicles, maybe not. Uh, as, it, as it seems, I don't think they're too valuable, which means I should be able to pick up a few of them, you know, for reasonably cheap. But yeah, that's, uh, I'll stop my rambling now, my gushing about uh, Lego robot dudes from the early 2000s. Thank you guys very much for watching. As I said, I do have a few more plans for imminent collection stuff in the future. And I've got some statues and figure reviews coming up as well, along with a few other things. So uh, stay tuned. And until next time, unity, duty, destiny.